together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Moroz, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together a year ago when we were first on stay-at-home orders as a way to remind us that though we were socially distanced, we were not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us. God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. This morning's video is pre-recorded, so I won't be able to respond to your comments, but please go ahead and put into the comments section your prayer concerns for the day. And um, that way, those who are joining you to watch this video will uh, be able to pray with you. Yesterday, we began a three-day series on um, Philippians chapter 2. It is the... it uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2 is... Uh, part or part of it is the appointed reading for... Passion, uh, Palm Passion Sunday. And this morning, we are actually going to look at the section of chapter two that is the appointed second reading for Sunday. Remember, we won't be reading it on Sunday because we're doing something different uh, with the, the Passion reading. So to kind of, you know, tighten up the service, uh, we're only doing the Passion reading, of course, and the Palm uh, Gospel reading as well, the Palm Procession with Palms. All right. So, <coughs> as I said uh, yesterday, this is uh, one of my favorite parts of Scripture, and I know I say that a lot, but this really, 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 really is one of my favorite parts of scripture, uh, particularly the focus on humility and service for others and not thinking better of yourself than uh, other people. So, um, and this section today uh, was evidently, I mean, we don't have a hymn book to prove this, but it was evidently a hymn that was sung in the early church. And so we're talking early, we're talking first, first century, uh, within uh, a couple of decades of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. So very ancient, very um, um, original. All right, so uh, starting in uh, verse 5, well, first of all, I should just to, what we looked at yesterday was do nothing from selfish ambition, um, the call to humility, uh, to regard others as better than yourself, and not to look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. So, starting in verse 5, Philippians 2, verse 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death 
on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, uh, kind of interestingly, the, uh, the second half of this is um, doing the, the opposite of what the first half is doing. So, exalting Jesus, lifting him up. Uh, but, of course, we do that because of the first section, which is the hard part. Um, so... Though Jesus was God, um, the, the, this line, uh, equality with God, uh, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. So, all right, this is, this is a, a kind of an analogy. So, the child of a wealthy parent. Uh, exploiting that relationship, the power that the money gives them, uh, all of that, doing willy-nilly whatever they want. Not that we've ever seen that ever happen. But I think that that is a, a way for us to compare. Of course, you know, the the wealthy parent is not God and the the child of a wealthy parent is nowhere near Jesus. But, um, but we can understand that, the spoiled bratness of it. And so this son of God, this child of God, did not see that as something to be exploited, to use for for his own desires, for his own uh, entertainment, um, whatever. But instead emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. So putting down that power. It's, it's said throughout the Gospels um, that like when Jesus is in the is, is being tempted by Satan in, in the wilderness. Uh, Satan says, well, you know, you, you have the power to turn these stones to bread. You, you have the power to uh, jump off the pinnacle and not be hurt because, you know, the angels are going to come in and, and protect you. Uh, you have the power to do all of this. Um, at when Jesus is being arrested at the end and uh, someone starts to fight, pulling out uh, uh, a sword, cutting off the ear of the high priest's slave. And Jesus said, don't you know that if I wanted to, I could call down an army of angels? That, that's a paraphrase. So for Jesus, this was a choice, a choice to lay the power down uh, for uh, enable to enable the the powers that be on earth to do whatever the heck they wanted with him, and they did. And um, so he became a human being. And he was obedient to uh, the will of God and um, because he was God. All the way to the physical death. At certain points in theological history, there's been the, uh, the conversation about, well, Jesus didn't really suffer because... Uh, God wouldn't want to let that to happen and you know we can't see that 
and and that's a heresy a very specific heresy um, this only works only makes sense if Jesus really suffered if uh, the pain was real otherwise it was just theater and this was not theater this was uh, the work of human hands on God and then we get to the exalting so um, therefore God also highly exalted him so God and this is always weird, you know, the Trinity stuff, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. So God's doing something to God and it's, you know, we don't understand it. It's not three gods, but one God and I don't know. Um, but. Every knee should bend, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not because he could feed 5,000 people or he could heal uh, folks or that he could cast out demons. Not because of any, though, any of those acts of power, but because he humbled himself, because he went to the cross because he um, he humbled himself. And so this is an act of love on behalf of humanity that um, is beyond comprehension. I'll just say that. All right. So our song today is Song Over the Waters. And beautiful, beautiful. Um, but also the reminder in this is let your minds, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So the laying down of power and what that means in human life so anyway song over the waters so it's re refrain verse refrain god you have moved upon the waters you have sung in the rush of wind and flame and in your love you have called us sons and daughters. Make us people of the water and your name. Come fill our waiting hearts with the spirit of Jesus. Let us shine with your light and peace. God, you have moved upon the waters. You have sung in the rush of wind and flame. And in your love, you have called us sons and daughters. Make us people of the water and your name. All right. So today we are going to um, pray for the victims of violence. Jesus was the victim of violence. But we specifically want to lift up the victims of violence in uh, mass shootings that have been taking place, um, particularly Atlanta with the killing of six Asian women, uh, very um, pointedly Asian. I mean, that's why they died. 
um, and Boulder. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for this time to come together and study your word and to pray together. Lord, we lift up the concerns of our hearts as we pray. Lord, be with all victims of violence. We specifically, especially want to lift up uh, those affected by the violence in Atlanta and Boulder. Lord, help us to see the way that uh, racism in our society, sexism, homophobia, uh, bring about acts of violence. Help us to find the root cause of these violent acts so that we might lovingly change our culture so that they don't happen again. Lord, we lift up all who are impacted by COVID-19, which is every single one of us. We pray for those who are currently sick. We pray for their families as they try to stay safe themselves while taking care of their loved ones. We pray for the over half a million in our country who have died. We pray for comfort for their families. And we pray for those who will die this day. Lord, in all things, we turn to you, we trust in you, and we give you thanks for all that you have given us. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of your son. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, my dear friends, thank you for being here today. And remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.